Yeah, thank this you. is it. Great, thank you very much. Great, um, welcome back everyone. And uh, good to see all of us back. And um, one actually, one participant actually said, oh, I had a great time in the breakout session. So uh, <laughs> I hope we all did after such um, inspiring keynote uh, speeches from our three keynote speakers. At this time around, we're going to have a report back session. And in this session, I'll be calling upon breakout session facilitators to present one or two takeaways from your breakout session in, in a maximum of 60 seconds. So that's, that's a real, real challenge there. <laughs> and we have nine breakout groups uh, that we'd like to hear from um, this time around. And so what we're going to do is to make use of our chat box as much as possible when you have a question or a comment to either the facilitator or the group or each other or even the keynote speakers, please keep dropping your comments, your questions um, um, into the uh, chat, chat box. At this moment, I would like to invite uh, Mary Kate uh, from breakout session A to give us uh, your takeaway. Over Thank to you. Thank you so much, Roland. We covered a lot of ground in uh, the discussion around action track one, but there were a few themes that kept coming up and that was the issue of farmer's choice and choice with um, your food consumption as well. Access to information. So access to information regarding uh, your seeds or taking care of your land or market access. So the information aspect. Um, the linkage between the nutrition and the health aspects in a community, including water, sanitation, hygiene, and even distance between markets or health centers where people can get access to information on nutrition and other things related to their food intake. And also uh, the lack of diversity in a lot of mark uh, local markets, especially but also the lack of diversity available to local farmers. And that kind of segued into the discussion around these uh, policies that tend to hinder farmers' choice because of GMOs or other particularly um, engineered seeds. And while those can be really helpful, there was an encouragement in the group for these to be better harmonized with, with farmers' choice and uh, what that could look like as far as producing more uh, diverse access in markets, as well as more nutritious food for local communities. Um, we tried to keep it as local as possible. So that meant there were also some really good points brought up on the value of capacity building at the local level, as well as the value of information sharing and gender roles. So what is the role of the women and even being able to take on certain leadership to uh, learn how to hold back certain crops to keep them for the next season and keep people strong from season to season or across um, post-harvest season loss. So what are the particular leadership roles of women in that space? Um, I'll, I'll leave it there because I'm sure there are other great points for Action Track also brought up. Great, thank you very much, uh, Medicaid. And please use the chat box to share any comments, any questions that you have there. Um, at this point, um, John, Dr. John Kunrod, may we hear from your breakout group, please? Yes, thank you. Uh, we had a wonderful breakout group. Uh, the, I really, it really validated the point that Simon made at the beginning that we need simultaneous community level action and government action, influence on the governments. A big focus of our group was on education and training um, so that small scale farmers have the skills, have the knowledge, have to deal with the financial systems, um, that there's community level action to educate people through the schools, through cultural events um, on the importance of nutrition, of sustainable consumption, as well as some concrete action around improving rural roads, as well as influencing the government to uh, really to tear down some of those barriers, um, such as uh, the dominance of monopolies around fast foods, et cetera. So that was our group. 
Great. And I have Thank lots of notes much. that I'll be sharing with everyone later. Great. Thank you very much, John. Uh, at this point, may we turn to Lisa North. Over to you, Lisa. Sure, great. Thank you, Roland. What a rich, rich conversation. These are, I can just feel the energy in this big room as we all come back. Um, just a few key big themes from our group. Uh, we've, uh, we had a lot of discussion around access, whether that was access to land, particularly for women and youth whether that was access to more advanced inputs. There are some countries or communities or areas that are farther behind in their access to the more advanced inputs. We also had a number of themes that were centering around the, the idea um, that were related to incentives. So subsidies for nutritious foods. There's a lot of subsidies out there for commodity crops, but not uh, as many subsidies for really uh, rich, uh, nutritious foods, and also incentives to grow food locally, nutritious food locally, and keep it local. So to have uh, reasonable prices in local markets or reasonable incentives in local markets so that neighbors can share their locally grown crops with each other. Um, and another theme I would say, uh, some of the ideas centered around was also like what John just said, training and education. So um, how to, uh, what, what are the new things that you need to know for crop storage when it comes to more nutritious, nutrient rich foods as opposed to commodities? Um, so those are just a few of the highlights. Uh, loved our discussion. Back to you, Rollins. Thank you very much, Lisa. And um, we'll now hear from Fatema uh, may we hear from Fatima from uh, breakout session E. We also had a very rich session and we started off with this problem set around that we're trying to solve a lot of simultaneous equations at once. And ultimately where we wanna head to from that problem set is a solution that's really centered around building a new food system that respects both new knowledge and new technologies that are emerging but also pairs that with indigenous knowledge of what already works to be sustainable. And to get to there, which is a, a very, um, I think, provocative and exciting uh, future-based vision, it really requires a few things. It requires real investments and partnerships with local communities, not just imposing visions on local communities, particularly from technical specialists in the global north, but really making sure that local community buy-in is there it means empowering and resourcing indigenous communities and indigenous populations and not just co-opting them in solutions. Um, it requires really thinking through what decolonizing development would actually mean in the food sector particularly and looking at transfer of both power, resources and decision-making from global to local uh, to, to local levels and really building out stronger community-based partnerships. Um, to thinking about partnering with NGOs, greater collaboration, and really thinking through um, how we get resources to local communities and not just contractors and consultants, but really investing the, the big bucks with the communities that need it the most that actually know how to run it the most. Um, so that's a quick summary of a very uh, rich uh, conversation. Thank you very much, Fatema. And may we hear now from Daniel? from Group F. Thanks, Rollins. Um, I wanna thank my group. They were very engaged and this, it was not like pulling teeth how some of these things can be. So I just wanna thank them. We first uh, talked about some of the barriers and successes and the, the sort of deep structural and historical norms that are really, really hard to break down. Um, and around that, the need for legislation and, and legal processes and, and, and policies to come into place um, around things like land rights, of course, ten, tenure, including the joint ownership between women and men of land in, in places like India. Um, successes we talked about included the, the power of cooperatives, especially over the last year and a half, because they've been able to create a lot of resilience in, in food systems and empower people and give them uh, an opportunity to, to not only work collectively together, but also to gather and, and, and break down some of the myths of, of what was happening during the, this very critical time. Um, we, we, of course, talked about extreme gender inequality 
and the need uh, around that for more data specifically uh, on, on women's work um, because we can't, we can't know what we don't measure um, and, and how uh, one of the things that I, I thought was interesting is we really talked about uh, the need for including men and boys in that kind of discussion. And, and one of our, our participants remarked that if we were having this discussion five years ago, uh, that person would have, you know, sort of uh, balked at that, but now really realizing that men and boys need to be part of this conversation as well. Um, we talked about the, the big question of dismantling existing power structures and, and the need for a revolution of sorts. Um, and, and it goes back to what we've heard throughout um, from, from other speakers about the need for education, training, uh, better digital skills, um, the need for sort of understanding and engaging with media, whether it's social media or other forms of media, um, demystifying you know, uh, computer skills around things like Excel or Microsoft Word, and, and, and the need for, for um, learning uh, critical thinking skills so that you, you are, are not just believing everything you read. Um, uh, and then we, we ended on, on youth and the need for actually talking to youth, not just reading about what youth say, and, and also understanding that youth are not a homogenous group, um, that they um, you know, have lots of different skill sets. They can be engaged in, in you know, whether it's government consoles or in cooperatives groups, uh, and at many different levels, they need to be part of the conversation because farmers are aging all over the globe. So th this is, is really a critical point, um, especially right now. So I think I'll end there, but again, thank you to, to the folks in my group. It was a wonderful conversation. Great, thank you very much, Danielle. May we hear now from Gunjan from Group G. Thank you, Roland, and thank you to my group. Uh, I know we had some technical issues, but uh, thank you for bearing with that uh, as we went forward. So uh, we essentially talked about, you know, we looked at some of the barriers and we kind of looked at it in the context of the pandemic, but we also looked at, you know, which are kind of applicable even beyond. And those were, for instance, access to markets for smallholder farmers when transportation, you know, is cut off because of floods or any other reason or the pandemic, what happens in those situations? Uh, what happens in terms of access to foods if you are reliant on a lot of you know, food coming from the outside, especially if there isn't enough diversity in the local food systems, right? So what happens in those scenarios? Uh, what happens to income? Because uh, smallholder farmers, if they don't have access to markets and they don't have local food systems, don't have enough forced harvest strengthening or storage facilities, uh, what happens in that? Then we, we looked at some solutions. So we had some examples coming in. Uh, for instance, we had example in the Philippines of organic community you know, cultivation that had been started when the pandemic happened. So that, well, A, it was low carbon footprint, but B, there wasn't a food scarcity and there was a source of income and there was this ready market in the local community itself because there was a need for food. So we looked at that. We also looked at what are some of the traditional methods, you know, like societies in Afghanistan, for instance, who have traditionally, uh, you know, uh, used a lot of drying and other methods to preserve food. So is there a way to kind of use some of those traditional systems of food storage so that uh, farmers don't lose incomes when they don't have immediate access to markets so that the shelf life increases, the availability increases, and also there is an incentive for them to continue. So those were just some of the key things that we touched on. Uh, and, and the fact to kind of look at the context was another thing that we kept drilling in on. Thanks. Thank Robert. you very much. Thank you very much, Gunjan. Shall we now turn to Arthur from Group H. Over to you, Arthur. Thank you very much, Rollins. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, wonderful group. Uh, just. Not enough time, even though it's 40 minutes, but not enough time. <laughs> um, just to share with uh, everybody that uh, we looked at um, the resilience and what the vision is for people, for community-based uh, local food systems. Uh, we looked at the barriers that are um, being faced in various countries and also the role of stakeholders and the policies needed to see all this come to fruition. And we had a lot of uh, input uh, from across the globe, I mean, from um, Haiti, Zambia, Malawi, 
and Afghanistan. And so I just want to thank all the participants that were part of this group for their contribution. Uh, the first thing that we, just as some takeaways that we got was that uh, there is need for, uh, to achieve the different systems in producing food. So for example, looking at the vision of community-based local food systems um, in Haiti, where they do hydroponic um, food systems, where they have a shorter turnaround uh, to be able to support uh, individuals that are in need for food. Uh, Zambia depends on agriculture tremendously, and there's need to have uh, people to have access to organizations uh, to, to have a level of consistency in food systems. Um, one of the other key things that has come out is really the involvement of youth and uh, the involvement of youth to be able to transform the food systems of, um, of uh, the communities that we have. And also to make sure that we are not only focusing on schools, um, on farms, but to ensure that we are providing the right information to the youth. Um, a policy that which is a key takeaway for us as well is uh, in Afghanistan, where um, a lot of women are being involved in steps, for example, um, access to land uh, to ensure that uh, women are able to have different harvesting systems. So all these aspects that have been given to us, I hope will provide a guideline to something that can come to fruition. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Arthur. And I will really, really squeeze my last two speakers here, <laughs> Ignatius and Pascal. If you, if you can really, really um, uh, uh, tighten up and um, briefly from Ignacia, and then we will lastly hear from uh, Pascal, then we will move on and close our session. I would really like to respect mm -hmm. all of your time today. Over to you, Ignacia. Okay, thank you very much, Roland. I'm going to talk about the discussion we had in the Spanish group, which we did not include any of the action tracks in particular, but rather we spoke in general terms of community-led food systems. Uh, we talk about a vision centered on, centered on food sovereignty, autonomy, and community leaderships um, in a context in where the focus is often placed on promoting participation from outside the communities, but not from the appropriation of food systems by the communities, and that this is something that we must change. Uh, it's important to change. Um, in this sense, putting at the center means also acknowledging the diverse of food systems from a lot of, uh, in, in many senses. We talk about the territorial point of view, livelihood, gender, and the ethnic uh, point of view. This is all the, the senses we think it's important to recognize the, the diversity, to talk not uh, only about one food system, about, but more about food systems in, in, in this uh, wide uh, idea. Regarding barriers, we speak about the existence of a political vision focuses mainly focuses on assistance but, and not on rights, on security and not on sovereignty. Uh, and also we talk that much of our government's actions centered in agriculture negatively affects climate change and the strengthening of communities. And this is which is why we need greater co-responsibility from governments in this uh, general process. Uh, two final ideas, regard, one regarding gender inequality. Uh, we identify one of the main barriers uh, is the access to the land and other productive access, including not, uh, not enough government supports again. And finally, we also talk about consumers role in food systems. Uh, what we agreed is what we need to promote a change in consumption patterns in such a way that consumers also assume part of the responsibility in building resilient and inclusive food system and not only um, producers and other uh, places of the, of the system. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ignacia. And uh, um, we will, um, uh, Pascal, would you be able to do it in, 30 yes. seconds so we can close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will try. Thank you, Roland. Uh, in the French speaking group, uh, the takeaway uh, we would like to share is this. We are talking about community-led food system for resilience purpose, for equity purpose, 
for justice purpose. And we really need to focus on local assets, local resources, local knowledge. I'll mention local seeds, for, for example, high, low, high nutrient component, vegetable, and so on and so on. And making this real, we need the involvement of the government, involvement in terms of investments, in terms of regulation, to support the local food system supply chain. And third, we need also the involvement of the civil society to make sure that policy and the plan are put in place and make sure that those policy and plan are duly implemented and guarantee justice and equity. And above, all, of, of, above of this, inclusion of all. And last, we'd like to mention is the support from the scientists and the involvement of the private sector. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Pascal. And thank you very much, all of you, our um, uh, breakout session facilitators. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you, each one of you, for this great participation. And thank you, our um, uh, keynote speakers. At this point, I would like to invite my colleague, Dr. John Kunrot, the executive president of the Hunger Project and the co-founder of the Global Movement for Community-Led Development to close our session today. Over to you, John. Thank you, Roland. So thank you, everyone. So uh, the next steps uh, you're seeing there, we are going to prepare a report with all of your inputs and we're gonna do everything in our power to have people pay attention to it. Um, you have an advocacy toolkit that is going to be updated and circulated. Um, the, uh, this on our website, mcld.org, people will be able to find the recordings of the, of the, uh, of, of the keynote speakers um, and we're going to devote our next monthly global meeting of the movement to looking at next steps strategically together. How can we both advocate and mobilize these community-led resilient food systems? So uh, please, if you're not already on our mailing list, uh, get on it uh, by visiting mcld.org and clicking on subscribe. And then uh, please join us. Um, to really follow through and organize the actions that we can take collectively, locally and globally um, on May 26th. That's it. Thank you again. Thank you, Rollins, for an outstanding uh, leadership and to all of our speakers and participants. It's been a really, really wonderful and as many of the facilitators said, a very rich conversation and we will do everything in our power to have it make a difference at the highest levels. Thanks again. Thank you very much, John. And thank you all for your uh, participation. And we trust and we hope that you continue to engage with the movement and with advocacy around the summit going forward. Have a good day, good evening, good morning, <laughs> good afternoon good whatever in whatever part of the world where you are thank you and thank you all goodbye bye 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 everybody bye bye, bye, -bye. thank you bye 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 stay safe yes hi 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 <laughs>